Hey folks, this is Riker with a Diablo 3 patch 2.6.4 Season 16 Necromancer Build Guide. Now with the Season 16 starter set for Necromancer being Tragul, I figured what we'd present here is a Tragul speed build. Now we already have a build guide that still applies for a Greater Rift pushing build using Tragul set and Corpse Lance. What this will instead be is a build for doing speed T13 rifts. Now, Season 16 is the Season of Grandeur. Everyone gets a free Ring of Royal Grandeur. However, if you're not playing Season 16, we'll explain how to adapt this in order to still run this build. Let's begin with an item overview. The Tragul set. We're going to need to benefit from the full 6-piece bonus. The 2-piece bonus makes Blood Rush benefit from every rune. The 4-piece bonus basically gives us a nice life Buffer lets us go beyond our max health as a sort of preemptive healing. And then our six piece bonus makes the abilities that cost us life deal more damage and heal us more. Now, apart from the Tragul set, we'll also want the Jessif set. That is the main hand and offhand combo. Its bonus makes it such that when your target of command skeleton dies, your skeletons will automatically retarget someone. But more importantly, during the time that your skeletons are commanded to attack someone, you deal, or rather all of your minions deal, a bunch more damage. Now, skeletons will not be our source of damage, however. That will come from skeletal mages. In order to properly buff our mages, we'll want Tasker and Theo. These are gloves that greatly increase the attack speed of pets. You'll want to put these in the cube, and then if you're running in Season 16, you'll additionally want Stuart's Greaves for a huge movement speed buff, which works well for this speed build. Now, one of these two items will be in your cube, and the other you'll be wearing. Whichever rolls better, wear that version. If you're not running Season, then you don't have an option. You're going to cube Tasker and Theo, and you're going to forget about the speed buff. In our cube, we're going to want an Ingum. This will greatly help with cooldowns essential for many speed builds. We'll want Nemesis Bracers. Every time we touch a shrine or a pylon, we're going to spawn an elite pack. Again, a staple of many speed builds. If you're spawning and killing elites faster, you're going to progress faster. We're going to toss in a Hellfire Amulet for an extra passive. We're going to toss in a Crispin Sentence for extra damage. And we're going to toss in a Circle of Neluge's Evil to extend the duration of Skeletal Mages and allow us to summon two at a time. Then lastly, we're going for the trifecta of items that turbo buffs our toughness in Speed T13. That is going to be the Gold Wrap Belt, the Avarice Band Ring, and the Boon of the Hoarder Gem. So what happens is that the Gold Wrap makes us gain armor whenever we pick up gold. The Boon of the Hoarder will make more gold drop, and the Avarice Band will increase our pickup radius whenever we pick up gold, thus making it a lot easier and faster to pick up gold. Which ring you equip and which you cube depends entirely on which rolls best. Now with Crispin's Sentence, we're dealing more damage to enemies who are being crowd controlled. We're going to have skills that help crowd control enemies. So let's pop over and take a look at our skills now. Starting with our bread and butter, the damage dealer, Skeletal Mage, Life Support. Life Support is the only rune on this skill that costs us life. Therefore, we don't have much choice. However, the benefit here is that they last two seconds longer, meaning we have to spend less time casting them. The total number of Skeletal Mages you can have at any time is 10. And you'll want to do your best to ensure that you always have 10 Skeletal Mages deployed. Next, we're working in Bone Armor Dislocation. This stacks up to 10 times to give us a nice defensive buff. But the real kicker here is the Dislocation Rune that also stuns enemies. This triggers our Crispin's Sentence buff for that triple damage bonus. With Crispin's, we deal more damage to slowed enemies, but a lot more to enemies that are suffering some other form of crowd control, such as a stun. In speed builds, we are almost always under the effects of an Ingum, so we'll be able to pop Bone Armor just about any time we're going to want to attack a big pack of enemies. Ideally, what you want to be doing is hunting from elite pack to elite pack, and you should be able to pop this on every elite pack. Next, we're taking Devour Cannibalize. This lets us restore essence as well as life for every corpse we consume, and we'll want to be spamming this or numlocking it. Remember that with Tragools, we can go beyond our max health. So Cannibalize here will always benefit us unless we're already at double our health. Next, we're taking Land of the Dead, Frozen Lands. 
During the Land of the Dead window, which lasts 10 seconds, necromancers go into overdrive. You're given basically an infinite number of corpses, so you can spam devour all you want, have unlimited essence and unlimited life regen. Further, the Frozen Lands rune freezes all enemies. Huge crowd control here. Next, we're taking Command Skeletons, Freezing Grasp. Again, Skeletons are not a big part of our damage here, but the Freezing Grasp rune gives us more crowd control. And then lastly, we're taking Blood Rush and benefiting from every rune. Now, Blood Rush is an excellent mobility power. By default, it costs 5% health and has a 5 second cooldown. The Potency rune lets us also gain armor after we Blood Rush for 2 seconds, so ideally we want to be Blood Rushing at least once every 2 seconds. The Transfusion rune turns Blood Rush into a healing ability, and again, this heal is buffed by Tragools. So if you need healing, Blood Rush through as many enemies in a line as possible. Molting lets us leave a corpse behind so that we can always generate corpses if we need to. Hemostasis removes the life cost, and Metabolism gives us a second charge that we can store. That said, while we're benefiting from Ingum, we'll have infinite Blood Rushes. Onto our passives, first we're going to want to take Blood is Power. By spending life, we get a nice amount of cooldown reduction on all our skills. This will be particularly helpful towards Land of the Dead. Blood for Blood makes it such that whenever we pick up a health globe, the health cost of our next blood spell is removed, and we can stack up to 10 of these. Now, Skeletal Mage Life Support, for instance, costs 10% of your health. Now, thanks to our ring, we only need to cast Skeletal Mage 5 times to have 10 mages out, but that's still 50% of our health. With Blood for Blood, combined with the extended pickup radius granted by our Avarice Band, we'll often get free Skeletal Mages. Extended Servitude will further increase the duration of our Skeletal Mages, and then Dark Reaping will let us gain 2% Essence and Life per kill. Since we'll be killing things very quickly, we'll be benefiting from this very often. Then the last passive we'll take with our Hellfire Amulet will be Final Service, the Free Life Passive. Alright, on to exactly what we want on every piece of gear. Refer to the link in the video description to the Diablo 3 Planner for the most up-to-date information here. This is where I present an idealized version of the gear you want. This gear that you'll see on my character is not ideal, but listen to the idealized stats that I list off. For your shoulders, you'll want Intelligence, Vitality, Life Percent, Area Damage. For your Helm, Intelligence, Crit Chance, Skeletal Mage Damage. For your Hellfire, Physical Damage, Crit Chance, Crit Damage. For your Chest, Intelligence, Vitality, Reduced Damage from Elites. For your Gloves, Intelligence, Crit Chance, Crit Damage, Attack Speed. For your Bracers, Physical Damage, Intelligence, Vitality, Crit Chance. For your Belt, Intelligence, Vitality, Life, Armor. For your Pants, Intelligence, Vitality, Armor. For your Boots, Intelligence, Vitality, Armor, All Resist. For your Rings, Crit Chance, Crit Damage, Attack Speed. For your Weapon, Intelligence, Percent Damage and attack speed, and for your shield, intelligence, vitality, crit chance, increased damage versus elites. For your gems, in your helm, you want a diamond for cooldown reduction. In your chest and pants, you'll want topazes for more damage. Then the legendary gems, as we said, we want a boon of the hoarder. Then we'll want a bane of the trap for a lot more damage against crowd controlled enemies, which should be all enemies given we have so many sources of crowd control. And then lastly, an enforcer gem, which buffs our pet damage. For your Paragon Points, you want to get your total move speed up to 25%, then dump everything into Intelligence. For Offense, you'll want to keep your total crit chance and crit damage at a 1 to 10 ratio, then dump into Attack Speed and then Cooldown. For Defense, Armor, Life, All Resist, Life Regen. For Utility, Area Damage, Life Per Hit, Resource Cost Reduction, Gold Find. And that's going to wrap up this video. As a reminder, if you want to push Greater Rifts with the Tragool set, check out this old video, but be sure to, again, check the video description for the latest D3 Planner link on the optimized gear that you want. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my Twitch and Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. If you like what you see on this channel and want to support the creation of more content, you can consider becoming a Royal Raider on Patreon, where your support is immensely appreciated. We've got a variety of backer rewards, including behind-the-scenes content, monthly virtual hangouts, and more. If you enjoyed this video, please share it, check out these other videos, and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders for more Diablo content.